If you believe it, you will benefit from it. If you don't believe it, that, that same word will condemn you. When you preach the word, the word is light. It brings illumination. They get to know that the Savior wants to save me. So, when the light comes into you, eh, and men love darkness rather than what? So, they love darkness rather than light. Because what? Their deeds were evil. So we are to preach the gospel. And the gospel is light. When it comes into our heart, it shines. It gives illumination. It gives, it changes your perspective of life. It changes what life is in your mind. You see, when you are not born again, a life is a car. Life is a house. Life is a marriage. Life is uh, all the other things. This milk and chance. They are all light. But when light comes, the way you see things will be better. When light is not there, people see things that are rotten as designer. You go and put on some rag and wear as if they are going to town. It's something else. The day your eyes open, say, is that me? What am I holding? The gospel brings light to life. And we see life in the right. <laughs> but some too can see it and still refuse. So, when we bring the gospel, when you understand the gospel, your perspective of life changes. Where you put emphasis on is different. I believe it's a gospel that can change what is happening. Once we understand the gospel well and the light of the gospel is in our heart, there are certain things you don't even need to beg somebody. When there's a light in your heart and you go to the office, you don't play. You go to work hard. Because you know that if I don't work, this one don't work, this one don't work, the work will collapse and I will be dismissed. I will lose my job. But if you are blind, you will still even what they used to. Sometimes people bring people to the shop. You are suffering. You say, oh, come and sell so that I can pay you some. They will come and steal. And come and stand in church. Lift their hands. Julo. Barau. Fiafeto. Okronfo. The person helps you. Sometimes you don't even know how to recommend people. But I think if you're a Christian and somebody recommends you, you should work hard to give him another chance to recommend another person. <laughs> if you're faithful, with another man's work, God will give you yours too. That's how the Bible puts it. It also means that if you are unfaithful with another man's work, even your own, you will never get so. When people are looking for truthful people, even in the church, you can't get. I 
I pray that the body of Christ will be the salt. If you are a salt, nowhere they put you can corrupt you. There's a gospel that is preached through words, and there's a gospel that is preached through deeds and action. Some they hear, some they see. In fact, what they see is more powerful than what they hear. Because we are hearing many things. But when they see that gospel being lived in you, it attracts them. And they want to live that way. Then you can help them how to live that life. The gospel has the power to change anyone both good and bad, the gospel have no limitation. It can break through. So next week, I will continue with this gospel. If we want a miracle, this is the source of a miracle. Any time this gospel is preached, miracles follow. Amen. So why will miracle follow? Jesus will say, what this pastor has said is true. Anytime it's preached, Jesus appears and confirms it. It is always confirmed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And good morning to you all. And you are welcome to our Easter Sunday morning service. Hallelujah. Today is a resurrection morning. Amen. Oh, are you glad to be here this morning? Then why don't you rise up on your feet and give a mighty shout and a clap unto the Lord Jesus. He has risen. I said, 
he has risen. The dead could not hold him captive. He is risen. Hallelujah. If you believe Jesus Christ has risen from the grave, then give a shout unto him. A shout of victory unto him. A shout of honor unto him. Oh, you are not doing as people who are celebrating. We are celebrating the life of Jesus. The risen king, the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords. Give a shout and a clap unto him. Hallelujah. It's so great. It's something wonderful that Jesus has done for us. He was crucified. He was, he was, he was killed. And they, they, they buried him. For three days, he said, dead, you cannot hold me. I'm not here. This is not my dwelling place. So therefore, I'm leaving. And he lifted up his voice and rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what Christ has done for us. The resurrection has given us victory. The resurrection has given us freedom. He has given us power. Hallelujah. Give another shout. A shout of victory. A shout of victory. If you have your handkerchief, if you have your uh, scarf, if you have your cloak, just wave it unto the Lord and celebrate the victory of the Lord. Oh, do it, do it unto him, do it unto him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, yes, Lord. Lift up your voice and begin to thank God for such a wonderful day. Begin to thank him for giving you victory. Victory over circumstances, victory over every situation. Begin to thank him and bless his name for what he has done for us. Begin to bless him and give him the glory that he deserved. The good things that the Lord has done for us. Oh, yes, Lord. Begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Karabo Soki and Daraba. Oh, give him the praise. Give him the praise. Oh, yes, Lord. I want you to celebrate the Lord for the victory he has given unto us through his resurrection. Begin to thank God for the finished work on the cross. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. The blood that brought us salvation. The blood, the blood that brought us deliverance. Oh, yeah. Deliverance from the power of sin. Deliverance from the power of the enemy. Begin to celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord with the goodness, oh God. Begin to bless him and praise his name in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Also bless the name of the Lord for his divine protection throughout the month of March. The Lord has been good. He has been faithful. He has seen and right from the first March up to today. Today is the last day of the month in the month of March. Begin to thank him. Begin to bless him for his deliverance, for his divine protection that he gave unto you throughout the month of March. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, parable suki the Lord has favored us. He has favored us. He has seen us through the month of March. He has been a wonderful man. Oh, Pakia Norobo Sokia. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, He has favored us. He has given us all that He takes for us to go through the month of March. Begin to thank Him. Begin to bless Him. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Pakia Norobo Shekia Dapa. The Lord has been good. He has been good to us. He has been good to us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give a clap offering unto the Lord. Oh, you are not clapping like people who are celebrating. We experience God's divine presence in this place. In our Easter edition of our spiritual emphasis, wonderful things happen, great and mighty things happen. Lives were delivered. Healing took place in the lives of people. So many things. There were great transformation in this place. We want to thank God for all that he did for us during this period of racial emphasis. The Lord did wonderful things, great mighty things that he did. And he used men of God also to, to, to 
bring all these things to come to pass. Lift up your voice and begin to thank God for what he did for us during the spiritual emphasis. Begin to thank him for his divine presence. Thank him for his power that he released. Thank him for his anointing that was available. Begin to thank him and bless his name for what he did for us. Oh yes Lord, we are all partakers of faith. Oh the Lord did wonderful things for us. He did great things for us. During this spiritual emphasis you were not the same. The Lord turned our lives around. He were trying transformed we were molded in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth oh yes lord begin to thank him begin to thank him oh yes lord bless his name and also thank him for the verses that he used thank him for the verses Rebbe and prokofi and the prophet himself thank him for for their lives the, he used them he anointed them for this great occasion begin to thank god for their lives in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth oh Oh, Karabo Shuki and Adapa. Oh, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise to God for the word that came forth, the change life, to transform lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, with great power, deliverance came. With great power, signs and wonders were performed. Begin to thank Him and bless His name for this time, oh God. We worship you and bless His name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. This morning, we are going to ask a simple question. Who will roll away the stone? In the book of Mark chapter 16, from verse 1 to 6, there was this you know, great woman of faith. When, the, when they buried Jesus, they determined, they purpose in their heart that they should do a proper anointing on the body of Jesus Christ. So they rose up early in the morning and decided to uh, walk towards the grave. Hallelujah. So as they were moving, something occurred to them that the grave has been sealed. There is a stone that is on the, in the entrance of the grave. And upon that, there were some guards that has been released. Amen. And the king has also put his seal on the tomb. So how can they enter? To do their anointing. Amen. How can they? Because they were determined to anoint the body of Jesus Christ. And I always say that these women are women of faith. Because upon all this obstacle, whatever is standing before, they decided that they would still do the anointing. So on their way, we ask themselves this question. Who will roll away the stone? In your life, who will roll away that stone? The obstacles that we are facing, who will roll it away? The sickness, the disease, who will take it away? Hallelujah. In their amazement, they saw that the stone has been rolled already. And there was an angel of God also sitting on the stone. Hallelujah. And that is what God is going to do this year. Your problems, the angel of God will sit on your problem. They will roll away every obstacle, every hindrance that comes on your way. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to just lift up your voice. And take the same faith that this woman had. And also pray that the Lord your God will cause an angel to sit on your problem. The Lord your God will roll away every obstacle, every problem. Whatever you are going through, may the Lord roll it away from your life. In Jesus' name, lift up your voice and begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, talk to him, talk to him in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord, who will save you? Who will save you from this problem? Who will save you from this obstacle? Oh, yes, Lord, who will come on your way? Who will be your rescuer? Oh, Mbakiyandad, but Jesus has made already made a provision. He's already risen. He's risen. Oh, yes, Lord. He's Lord over your situation. He's Lord over your circumstances. He was Lord over everything that you are going through. Before you open your eyes, he has already done it. He has already discharged his angels to go ahead of you, to go ahead of you and prepare the way for you. Oh, begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to him that the Lord your God will deliver you. The Lord your God will be there for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, he is 
is risen. He is risen. He is alive today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Why don't you give a clap offering unto the Lord. And begin to thank God for this hour. Begin to thank him. He has started working a work in your life. He has started doing marvelous things in your life. Lift up your voice and thank you for your prayer that we have prayed this morning because he's a God answering prayer. Oh, yes, Lord. He's a God who always answered our prayer. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for answering your prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And give a shout and a clap unto Jehovah God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together once again. He's risen. He's risen. He's risen. He's risen. Add your child. He did what he did on the cross of Calvary. Somebody give five people a high five. Tell them he's risen, and everything around you is risen with Christ. Hallelujah! Your finances is risen. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah.
experience together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.
your seats. Gather to have fellowship, have fun, and enjoy lots of food. Ladies and gentlemen, our Easter picnic and mini fair is here again. Date, Monday 1st of April 2024. Time, 10 a.m. happening here at the Holy Ghost Temple. Prepare your palates and bellies to experience a wide variety of delicious local and continental dishes and drinks. Yes, the food bells will start ringing from breakfast for those who come early, right down to lunch and even supper. Get your game face on and get ready to compete in our indoor and outdoor games. There would be musical chairs, table tennis, oware, ludu, jenga, snooker, dads, football, racing simulators, video games, and many more. The children are definitely not left out as we bring the party to their doorstep with fun activities such as bouncing castles, slides, trampoline, face painting, cotton candy distribution, among others. Come along with your wallets, debits, and credit cards, including your checkbooks, and make your way to our stands at the mini fair. There will be a variety of goods and services on display for good businesses. Side attraction includes brass band music and introducing our MC for the day, Nana Yao Ofori Ata, aka One Month Thousand. You don't want to miss out on this wonderful time of fun, bonding, and establishing godly relationships. Come along with food and drinks to share and don't forget to bring any indoor or outdoor games that you love to play. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Is he risen this morning? Put your hands together. Let's celebrate the risen king who not only died and rose up, but lives forever. Hallelujah. About 1,993 years ago, on a Sunday morning like this, the man Jesus rose up from the grave. And what is historic about this resurrection is the fact that he was not the only one who had died before. Others had died and resurrected before and after him. But he's the only one who remains alive to this day. And you and I have the privilege of serving him. You want to put your hands together and celebrate the King of Kings who lives forevermore. He died and he rose and he is still alive. Put your hands together and give him a shout. And I have some more good news for you. That same power that dwelt in him, that raised him from the dead, lives inside of us. And if you believe that that power is inside you, celebrate the Lord for the power. Celebrate the Lord for the resurrection power. Hallelujah. On that note, on behalf of the senior pastor of this church, Prophet Christopher Yawano and his wife, and the entire leadership of this church, I welcome you all to this Sunday morning service and into the presence of the Lord. This is the Holy Ghost Temple of the International Central Gospel Church. We are a Bible-believing, charismatic church with a commitment to bringing leadership and vision to our generation and influencing our society with the principles of God's kingdom. would want to extend a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us for the very first time on a Sunday. If today is the first time you are worshiping with us, we ask that you kindly stand to your feet so that we can give you a Holy Ghost Temple welcome. Let's keep clapping for them. Those around them, kindly shake their hands, welcome them to church. Our ushers are handing out welcome forms. If you have received one, you can take your seats. And we ask that you fill the form with your full name and contact details and drop them in the offering baskets as they are passed around. Please wait briefly after service for a special time with our host and hostesses at the guest lounge located on the ground office of the A structure. For those of us who don't know where the A structure is, it is to the right of my right of this building and to your left. Hallelujah. We also want to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online. We would like to hear from you as you worship with us. So we ask that you leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know where you are worshiping with us from. Let us know how this service is being a blessing to you. We also encourage you to participate fully in the service as if you were here with us in person. We also encourage you to stay connected with us through social media. 
on WhatsApp and then my ICGC app to receive content from our church. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on X, and TikTok at ICGC Holy Ghost Temple. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell to be notified whenever we go live. You may also scan the QR code on the screen and connect with us via WhatsApp. First fruits. We'll be taking our first fruits for the month of March during our next Sunday service. We are all encouraged to honor the Lord with the first fruits of all our increases. You are kindly reminded that you can also give your first fruits digitally on our church website via the My ICGC app or by using the short code star 773 star 77 hash. Easter Monday picnic and mini fair. I thought I'll feel some excitement in the building. Easter Monday picnic and mini fair. Our much awaited Easter picnic and mini fair will be held tomorrow at 10 a.m. Don't spend the holiday at home. Come and interact with people, make new friends, and have an unforgettable experience filled with non-stop fun and excitement. We have a jam-packed schedule of activities to keep you entertained all day long. We have exciting indoor and outdoor games to keep you on your toes. Come along with the little ones. We have, a, we have a fun load of activities to keep them entertained all day as well. And our dedicated children's facilitators to keep an eye on them. Please remember to bring enough food to share with others. Remember what was said last week. You bring your food, I bring my food. And if you have any indoor or outdoor games that you love to play, bring them along too. This is your chance to make new friends and have a great time together. So please come and release some stress and rejuvenate for the weeks ahead. Amen. As part of the preparations towards the picnic, if your car is parked at the other car park, that is to my left-hand side, kindly take note that after service, setup will begin. So kindly do well to move your car and uh, park it at a safe place. Amen. Amen. <laughs> ICGC vacancies. ICGC head office wishes to engage suitably qualified persons for the position of children's ministry coordinator at the head office in Achimota and a regional administrator for the northern region. Full details of the advertisement for these vacant positions have been posted on the notice board. All applications should reach the head office no later than Friday 19th April 2024. Applic applicants can also send the applications via email to headoffice at centralgospel.com. Married Couples Ministry Meeting. All married couples are invited to the first general meeting of the group on Saturday, 13th April at 4 p.m. The venue is the Youth Hall. The topic for discussion is positioning yourself for an enjoyable marriage. Church services. We are encouraged to be a part of our weekly church services as follows. On Sundays, we run four services. Our adult service, children's service, and youth service for JHS students will begin at 8 a.m. Our second service, which is the New Breed service, begins at 10.30 a.m. This service is tailor-made for youths in the SHS and university levels and all young adults. On Thursdays, we will have the Prophetic Solution Center at 12 noon. Then on Fridays, we have our prayer service, which starts at 6.30 p.m. You are encouraged to be a part of all our services for a complete and balanced spiritual development. Wedding announcements. This is the final announcement. There will be a wedding between Gibson Oredu and Nasi Akwaku on Saturday, 6th April, 2024, at the Agri Chapel located within the Achimota School at 11.30 a.m. People of God, if there be any reason why these two persons should not be lawfully joined together, let the senior pastor and the leadership of the church know. If not, when it does happen, kindly hold your peace. It is time for us to honor the Lord with our giving. David said that I will not give unto the Lord that which will not cost me. God gave us a costly gift in his son Jesus. And today you want to prepare a costly gift to give to him on this Resurrection Sunday. You can give in cash by placing your money in the offering basket, or you can use the digital options displayed on the screen. The contemporary choir will minister to us as we give to the Lord. Let's put our hands together for them. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Do I have some overcomers in here? Do I have some overcomers in here? Come on, begin to bless the name of the Lord. For he is risen. He is risen for you and I. Just begin to bless his name. Begin to lift up sounds unto his name. Barosia tabare kayada bayo.
Put your hands together. Celebrate the risen king. Put your hands together for him. We also want to appreciate the contemporary choir. Put your hands together for them. And let's appreciate our band. Put your hands together for them. That is the good news. That we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from a place of victory. Hallelujah. And at this moment, I want us to humbly rise to our feet as we welcome ministering the word of God to us, our father, our senior pastor, Prophet Christopher Yawano. Put your hands together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power of the resurrection. We thank you that, Lord, you've given us a hope. And our faith is fully established that the God we believe in is a real God. Your son rose up from the dead to assure us that death is not the end. As we planted him and we sowed, you sowed him and he came up with many sons, we also bring our gift and let the same gift germinate and resurrect. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome to the resurrection morning. You may be seated. Thank you very much. How beautiful. I was looking whether I, I thought it is an angels are here. Was one of the story of the resurrection. The angels were dressed in white apparel. So I think that's why you also dress. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is very great. Uh, I want us to, this is not a time to mourn. It's a time to rejoice. Yes. Let us just praise God for some time. Yes. You see, if we understand what happened, we will praise Him. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, the foundation of the Christian faith is based on the resurrection. If he hadn't risen, it would be the same like any other religion. And you will not even be sure that what you believed is the truth, truth that you believed. But he got up and said, look, all that what I said is true. And all the promises I gave you, it will happen. And for me, it strengthened my faith. Amen. So, give us a... a
reason to rejoice? Because the resurrection power has left the grief and has entered into you. The Bible says the same spirit that brought Jesus out from the grave, that same power is in you. A hallelujah. So no death, no stone, no devil can put you under control. The power in you today must explode. Hallelujah. The city, thank you very much. I, I pray we get some more time to uh, just to rejoice. Hallelujah. So why am I rejoicing? In fact, if Jesus hadn't risen, our message would have no meaning. Before he died. Even in the Old Testament, there were prophecies spoken about his death and resurrection. He himself said to his disciples that I will die and in three days I will resurrect. He said it, but his disciples didn't understand. Sometimes when we speak, God speaks, we don't understand it until something is happening. They forgot that he said it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the Pharisees and the others remembered it. Disciples forgot it. Saying, sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver, you see how they call him, if he hadn't resurrected, he would have been a deceiver. But he proved to them that he is not a deceiver. said after three days I will rise. So this is not a strange thing. But because the human mind could not comprehend that somebody can die and three days the person can resurrect, all of us forgot. So that is the reason why they asked for soldiers. They send their soldiers to go and watch because they don't watch over dead bodies. How many, when Jesus was alive, he didn't have bodyguards. But after his death, they gave him bodyguards to guide his tomb. Because I believe that they believed it. Or they thought something was going to happen, the disciple will come and come and take the body away and later come and tell that what he said uh, has happened. But his disciples themselves have forgotten. They never remembered that. He said it before all of them. They were the closest. So sometimes some, a preacher, God can speak, a preaching can come, but those close might not understand it. He spoke to the crowd. Disciples were the closest. In fact, it might be the disciple that he was speaking to. But they forgot. Ask somebody, what word of God have you forgotten? God speaks. But in time of our trouble, we forget. 
But that is the very word he said that will preserve us. They remembered. So they put a guard there. Making sure that no foul deal come. But, so they made sure the tomb was properly what? Sealed. So they went and made the tomb secure. Sealing the stone and setting the guard. Not only the stone, not only sealing it, but they added a guard. What can then enter, even if he got up? That's why they said, look, let's make it such a way that even if he gets up, he can come out. Some of our lives, the enemy has placed your life under and said, put you in a certain place and said, look, even if they liberate you, but the resurrection power has no limitation. Nothing can limit it. Nothing, no stone, no seal, no God can stop the resurrection power in your life. Amen. Then that morning came. The Bible said the guards were waiting and watching. They were in their tent watching now. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary and Magdalene and other Mary came to see the tomb. That morning came there was something that happened. The guards were standing there and they saw something and they felt something. There was an earthquake and behold, there was what? Say great earthquake. Not small one, great what? Great earthquake. The resurrection power. Amen. Why did the earthquake? For the an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. If I believe that the reason why the angel came and rolled it is not because Jesus couldn't come out. In fact, he has no problem coming out. With the resurrection body, he can pass through all. But for you to believe, but they will still think he is still in the tomb. It wasn't the angel that resurrected him. After he got up and went out, the angel came and said, for a testimony, for people to know that this man has come out, they opened. If not, after showing himself to his disciple, people will see, say, even the disciple, you know, in the time of the disciple, they found it very difficult to believe that he was Jesus resurrected. They, it was more difficult for them to believe than you now. Because they followed, John followed him. And they followed him to the cross. You remember he told the mother of John before he died. John was standing there. So he saw this man, and when Roman soldiers kill you, they've killed you. They know how to kill you. <laughs> and they can certify that you are dead. They have doctors that will make sure you're dead. Because they were even going to break 
his bones. Then after checking, they were sure that the man was dead before they released the body. So, he didn't fall into coma. He actually died. Even if he fell into coma with the spear and all the things he went through by three days, the sore and the pain alone will not make you walk straight like that and tell them, peace unto you. No. This Jesus, the tomb was open. One, for the world to know that he's out. Two, to help Mary and the rest because their concern was the stone. They didn't have the chance to embalm, anoint him. So they wanted to go and just pour some oil on this something, on some spices on this, and they didn't know how they could go there. While they were going, I thank God, and they got up, and because of the Sabbath, they couldn't go at that time. They waited until the Sabbath was over. The rest time was over. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, there are so many Marys, and Salome, huh? bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Unfortunately, the men who were always making armor bearing and driving people away. They all ran away. The women remembered that look, even in your dead, we are still with you. Amen. Men, don't be angry with me. <laughs> the man will say, oh, if he's dead, he's dead. The woman still want to follow it. So early in the morning, the boss spice is ready. But they forgot that Jesus had told them that they wouldn't have time to anoint him. When Mary Magdalene, is it Mary Magdalene? When he, that perfume, that expensive perfume, when he was pouring it, and the disciples wanted to stop Judas. It was Judas. He said, oh, this expensive, this expensive oil. Look at how you're wasting it. They're poor. Some people care for the poor more than Jesus. It could have helped 40 poor people. It could give them lunch. That's good. After lunch, are they going to live or they're going to die? There's something that can give them eternal life. And that is what he was doing. So he said, Look, this woman is anointing my body for my death. Because they won't have time to do that. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of what? My burial. You see, all that happened, Jesus knew it. So Mary, you have done it. Even though I was not dead, you anointed because you wouldn't have the time to do it. 
And this is the time you are doing. So any time you have any opportunity to do good, don't wait. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Say, oh, Charlie, next time, not next time, if it comes into your heart, now is the time. If there's any time for you to preach the gospel, don't wait. Now is the time. Amen. So they went there trying to, we didn't do it, so let's go and do it. Meanwhile, they have done it. There was a need for them to do it. By the time they went, Jesus had left the tomb. So, they were wondering who will roll away the stone. And they said among themselves, who will roll what? Away the stone from the door of the tomb for us. So many questions. We are all asking those questions. Who will help us? There are stones covering our breakthroughs, you'll know this is what you should be, where you should be able to get, but there are stones that they've placed. There are impediments, there are things beyond your energy, your strength, your finances. And you are perplexed. Sometimes you start the journey before knowing that you need this. And while they were thinking, God has solved the problem. Amen. While you are thinking, he has done it. Amen. While you are thinking you are going to fight the devil, he is fought him and won the battle for you. Amen. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. For it was very large for even men to roll. <laughs> that is my version. Then, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a what? White robe, like how you are dressed in white today. That's why I said, when I entered, I said, hey, had the angels come here too? <laughs> I saw plenty of angels <laughs> celebrating, commemorating the resurrection. And they were, what? Sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Instead of being happy, they were what? Whose grief, Luther, have come to take this body? And he's taking the way and he's sitting there. I, I haven't seen such a great Luther before. Because you should go with the dead body. But he was sitting down there just for them to know. But he said to them, Do not be afraid. The resurrection brings a message that we don't need to be afraid. Amen. That if there is fear, don't be afraid. Amen. What everybody is afraid of is death. The man has overcome what men are afraid of. No matter how difficult or whatever situation you fall in, and as if there is no way out, he said, Don't be afraid. Amen. If you lose your job and you don't know 
the next meal that is going to come to you and your family, he says, don't be afraid. If you are sick and as if your end is coming, as if there is no hope for your life, he's saying that, don't be afraid. For the message of resurrection has taken away fear. It should drive away every fear. Everything that you're going through, no matter how difficult it is, there is resurrection. Amen. The resurrection power is there. Say, so don't be afraid. Okay. Do not be afraid. You see Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Jesus is not among the dead. If you are looking for Jesus, it is not the graveyard. He might have a grave there, but he's not in the grave. Seek him among the living. He is alive. Amen. That is why you can pray and expect an answer. Amen. You don't pray to people you are not sure they are up. There are some people we pour libation to. It's good. It may be good. But we are not sure whether that my father who is dead, what I'm pouring, whether he is, he understands or sees what I do. But there is a proof about Jesus that his body is not in the grave. All the masters, all the leaders, they might have promised us doctrine or the way to please God, the way to live with man, the way to do A, B, C, D. The only master that proved that yes, I'm only showing the way, but I am the way. The others are trying to show us the way. But he is the way. It's a food assembly now, okay? So everything, everybody is seeking that way. But he said, I am the way. I have resurrected. So he said, don't be afraid. I am alive. But he said to them, do not be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where you laid him. Don't seek Jesus among the dead. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. So he continues. Oh, my dear. But go. So he gave them, the angel gave them, he said, go, tell his disciples. And what? And who? Was Peter not one of the disciples? So why did he Mention Peter's name. Will Peter have the boldness after the last hour denying Jesus? Sometimes we have that guilt and we can't go close. So he said, No, tell the disciples, don't leave Peter. I'm mentioning his name. Tell Peter too that I say, no matter what he's done, he shall come. Some of us might have denied Christ. 
several times. But today, Jesus says, you are all part. Come. In fact, Peter ran. <laughs> but go tell this apocalypse that he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So when they told him, Peter and John, they started running uh, to, the, uh, to the grave to go and find her. Because these women, women, say, they said these women, they, everything, they make, you have, you have everything, they, they say things, so we won't go and see by ourselves. Even when they see a stick, they say it's a snake. <laughs> so Peter, let's go and, so Peter therefore went out and the other disciple, which is John, and we're going to the tomb. But John was faster than, you see, Peter only speed said John. Uh, and Peter and came to the tomb. So they, they both ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. But he was afraid to go inside. And he stooped down and looking in, saw the lining cloth lying there. Yet he did not go in. John. <laughs> Your honey. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Then Peter came. What was his name, Peter? Oh, let's did. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into what? The tomb. Peter, no, no. If Peter hadn't gone there, like he's not Peter. Peter, you enter. Following him and went into the tomb and they saw the linen cloth lying there. What they put him in was there. The person, he came out of it. And the handkerchief, and the head, the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. I'm just telling you the picture. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also. I feel he saved. Some of us always like people to first try something. So he, he went in also and saw and did what? Believed. So this is on the figment of the disciples' mind. People think, oh, maybe they thought he rose up. In fact, they found it very difficult to believe. The Bible said that when they told them they didn't believe, Jesus then have to go to them personally. It's not one person that saw it. He revealed himself to one, one by one, then sometimes in a group. Then at a point, he revealed to about 500 people at the same time. So 500 people cannot hallucinate and see the same thing. And that he was seen by over what? I just made it moderate. Over what? 500 brethren. Let's move a little bit. That's five. And that he was seen by Cephas. You know Cephas? Who is he? Oh. Ole. Then by the twelve. Uh huh. After that, he was seen by what? Over 500 brethren at once. At once, like as you are in this church. Then Jesus comes. Zoom. You will see those who run. <laughs> Commotion.
after that after that he was seen by James then by all the disciples at the point he was sent to prove to them he was alive but still so it's not people who had the thing in their mind that the man was resurrected when so they saw it even when he revealed himself they were finding it very difficult to believe he has to prove himself that morning when people heard that the women came and announced it and the whole village the whole town was in commotion that the women said they went there and they saw that the man have resurrected so people were going to Emmaus some two disciples so they were moving and they were talking hey, Kwaku, these women don't kill us oh. every day they have a story Kwaku said ah what is that they said Jesus has resurrected have they seen a dead man coming up from the dead. Romans killing somebody and the person resurrecting. Yes, and certain women of company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. I hear news born of all the radio stations. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. So they were debating it. One said, ah, this woman, let's take care of it. They'll spoil the, they'll, they'll spoil the, the as well. look, they'll destroy things. So. They will say, oh, it might be true because they didn't see the man. I said, were you there? Did you see it? While they were going and talking and chatting, a third man joined them. So he said, why are you talking? What are you? Uh, oh, please. The man that joined them. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walked and are sad? A resurrected man, but they are sad. And he said to them, Okay, the, the 40, said the 18. Then the, man, the one whose name was Clopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? <laughs> Papa, all this news that have gone all over Jerusalem, into one day. That those ladies, their news have spread all over. But we haven't seen the man too. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? What happened? And he said to them, What things? So they said, Jesus asked them, What happened? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, see, mighty indeed and wet because if he speaks it's great he doesn't only speak he works what he says this man whatever he says he will do he does it so our hope was in it who was a prophet mighty indeed and wet before God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to, the, to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. They were looking for a physical redemption. Someone who came 